Sa gitna ng nagpapatuloy na imbisigasyon, muling pinigas si Department of Justice Secretary Jesus Crispin Boyo Ibulya ang kaugtay ng mga aligasyong pagkakasangkod niya sa ilang nakakagimbal na krimen. Ayon sa mga opisyal, inilantad sa imbisigasyon ang mga ebidensyang naguugnay sa pangalan ni Rimulya sa nasabing insidente. May pit na tinututukan ng Senado ang mga kinauukulang ahensya ang isyu upang matukoy ang mga detalye at responsibilidad ng mga personalidad na nasasangkot. Samantala, bigyang diin ng mga senador na mahal Naga ang patas at masusing imbisigasyon upang matiyak na walang bahid ng bias o political influence ang gagawing aksyon. Marami ang nagbabahala sa magiging epekto nito sa integridad ng DOJ, lalo na kritikal ang papel ng ahensya sa pagpapatupad ng batas. Naniniwala ang mga mamamayan na hindi dapat isakripisyo ang hustisya kahit sino pa man ang bataas na opisyal na iniimbisigahan. Patuloy ang pagbabantay ng publiko at media sa pag-unsad ng kaso sa mga susunod na araw inaasahang mas marami may pang impormasyon ang ilalabas hinggil sa pagkakaugnay ni Sekretary Rebuya sa krimen. Tinitiyak ng mga imbisigador na walang itatago at mananatiling transparent ang proseso upang may balikang tiwala ng publiko sa pamahalaan. At yan nga ang balitang ating pagkakatutukan. Ngunit bago ang lahat siguraduhin mag-subscribe at hit ang notification bell para sa patuloy na pagtutok sa mga sulip ng bagong balita sa tunay na boses ng masa. na na sila na nag-handle. Kailangan ba na ando dun din yung isang dosena or marami pang PAW lawyers? Kasi ang dami po kasi nangangailangan ng tulong ng ating PAW lawyers. And if it's a hearing being handled by the judge na hindi naman sila na nakakapasok doon sa kwarto at nasa labas at sobrang maingay nahihirapan po yung korte na magkaroon ng discussion. And this is something na okay naman sana pero hindi ba una-una sa labas ang ingay, hindi marinig sa loob. Pangalawa, eh andun na yung prosecutors, kailangan ba andun din yung PAO? Paano naman yung maraming nangangailangan ng tulong na kailangan mabigyan nila ng atensyon? Secretary Rimulia, is it true that the Public Attorney's Office also filed cases against BOH officials involved in COVID vaccination during the time of President Duterte? However, I would like to point some of the injustices being done to our doctors, to our scientists, and to the real experts who have served the government. May I inquire, if cases are already filed, let's say nag-file po yung tao, and ngayon ang nagre-representa are the prosecutors, is it fair to say that during hearings or trials or whatever processes you call that, There will be like at least a dozen PAO lawyers in the vicinity na ando doon na naman yung prosecutor. Sayang kasi yung pera ng bayan. May I inquire if this is in order, Mr. Chair? Um, I think that uh, this is better answered by our chief PAO officer who's here right now. Uh, with the permission of the Honorable Chair yes, go ahead. and our Honorable Secretary of Justice, Uh, the PAO lawyers are assigned to the victims who, who filed criminal charges before the DOJ and they were requested by the uh, victims, the families, to be present so that they could be well represented. In, even in other criminal cases, there are private prosecutors aside from the state and public prosecutors. It is allowed by the court. Yeah. Unless yes, the court your honor... Po, sorry uh, po, if I may, para lang po ma-clarify, ma'am. Okay. Uh, yung tanong ko po kasi, kung may kaso at andun na yung mga prosecutors, isang dosena na sila na nag-handle, kailangan ba na andun dun din yung isang dosena or marami pang PAO lawyers? Kasi ang dami po kasi nangangailangan ng tulong ng ating PAO lawyers And if it's a hearing being handled by the judge na hindi naman sila nakakapasok doon sa kwarto at nasa labas at sobrang maingay, nahihirapan po yung korte na magkaroon ng discussion. And this is something na okay naman sana pero hindi ba una-una sa labas ang ingay, hindi marinig sa loob. Pangalawa, eh andun na yung prosecutors, kailangan ba andun din yung PAO? Paano naman yung maraming nangangailangan ng tulong na kailangan mabigyan nila ng atensyon. Yes, ma'am. Uh, apat lang po ang nandun. Only four. Ang kaso po doon ay walo. 
apat lamang po ang Paul Lawyer na nandun. Baka po yung maingay yung mga expectators o yung mga kamag-anak ng mga namatay. At uh, our lawyers have designated resident court assignment. One court, one Paul Lawyer. Hindi po kami nakapag-deploy ng marami sa okay. mga kaso. Mr. Chair, please... Masensya na po, ma'am. Ako yeah. nga po dapat nandun, hindi po ako pupunta eh. Yeah, yeah, let me proceed to my next fee. question, Mr. Chair. Okay, proceed, ma'am. Okay. Secretary Rimulia, is it true that the Public Attorney's Office also filed cases against BOH officials involved in COVID vaccination during the time of President Duterte? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I was told that this, this happened. So, ibig po sabihin, eh, patuloy pong hinahabol ng Public Attorney's Office yung ating mga scientists, yung ating mga totong eksperto, yung ating mga vaccinologists, na konting-konti na lang po kami. Because if that is true, Secretary, do you think that is justice or injustice to our experts, scientists, doctors, health workers, and government employees? Um, Madam Chair, the primary duty of the POW is actually to defend the poor in criminal cases. However, uh, people who are not represented also have the right to counsel. That's why the POW attends to different needs of, uh, of Filipinos, uh, for that matter. But um, as a matter of policy, of course, we do not want a government uh, office fighting another government office, or at least... Uh, the, 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 the clear policy is really for them to defend. The other, the other functions that they're attending to are more out, out of liberality, uh, Madam Chair, out of liberality of the Department of Justice because uh, of this, uh, of course, the, the direct counsel of every Filipino, whether this is for prosecution or for defense. So, but, uh, Mr. Chair, I, Mr. Chair, Honorable Secretary, um, cases against our doctors who implemented the COVID vaccination was also filed. Well, um, that is uh, one of the one, one, one of the actual the part of the evolution of the job of the public attorney's office. Uh, actually, you know, when we first had the civil liberties, uh, not law, law office, civil liberties office at the time that the, the, the lawyers were presenting the destitute and the poor, uh, most of them were just really to defend. But now. Uh, it, it has already come to the point where many, many of our countrymen go to the public attorney's office for all kinds of counsel. And yeah. uh, sometimes they're constrained. Chair, I fully appreciate that. But these are actually cases being built up because of vaccination. And so if that is the case, Mr. Chair, your honors, maybe DOJ can instead recommend to the Department of Health and to the national government to stop all vaccination programs. Kasi ang nangyayari po kasi, pag ginagawa po ng ating mga doktor at ng ating mga totoong eksperto yung kanilang trabaho, inuulan po sila ng mga kaso at wala naman silang pera na ipagtanggol yung kanilang sarili at wala rin silang mga pera na post ng post ng bail. So if this is the case, maybe DOJ or PAO can instead, you know, recommend to the government to stop all vaccination programs and allow all epidemics and outbreaks to come out Kasi napaka-konti lang po ng mga eksperto na ito, we can instead recommend them to other countries because our profession is very much in demand in other countries. Madam Chair, it, uh, I don't think that the DOJ should step into the shoes of the DOH uh, when it comes to policy. We allow, uh, of course, we respect the specialization of the DOH in this matter and we cannot uh, intrude in the territory. The fact that there are, there are Filipinos who wish to sue others uh, is, is really a, a very novel idea that came in already just lately. This is not policy of the department. And it is something that may be discussed later on because uh, we are aware that uh, the, the job of the POW has to be more defined right now. And it is something that uh, we will consider, Madam Chair, yeah. uh, in the future. Mr. Chair, um, recently the House of Representatives um, passed at the committee level the Physicians Act. And this is actually intended to police doctors similar to the integrated bar of the Philippines because that is our problem. Many of the doctors would go out in media claiming to be experts, but in our code of ethics and before the Hippocratic Oath, that is not allowed. 
It's very unethical. We cannot advertise our expertise. And doctors are always coming out in social media are actually those that do not have patients. Um, with this, my question is, what's the stand of the Department of Justice? Because what is happening is contradictory to science and public health. Who has the expertise when it comes to forensic medicine and forensic pathology? Is it the PNP, criminal, uh, um, PNP Crime Laboratory and the NBI? Or is PAO now the new expert in terms of forensic uh, pathology? Because we as doctors recognize the profession of pathologists and we know that people who are under the public attorney's office are not pathologists. And the autopsies being conducted in public, my God, Mr. Secretary, Honorable Secretary, this is a very big public health chaos because you're actually exhuming unsanitized without good practices. So my question again is, sino po ba ang ating mga eksperto? Ang PNP Crime Lab at ang NBI Forensic Pathology Office or yung ating public attorney's office because I can also cite many cases that this has created confusion and the accused are left to go away to be are, are left na, are, the victims are given another injustice because of this confusion uh, Madam Chair the Department of Justice has recognized that there is a problem right now in the country about forensic pathology and in this light we have asked the United Nations through the joint program to help us train the forensic pathologists of this country. And we, uh, we just had a, a training program uh, done in uh, July, uh, last month, last month, no? Uh, two or two months ago, we had this program coming, uh, happen where, where the UN Special Rapporteur, uh, Maurice Tidball Beans, uh, a very renowned doctor throughout the world, uh, conducted the said uh, forensic pathology training. In the country right now, there are only two recognized or actually lettered forensic pathologists if we are to be very strict about this matter. These are Dr. Raquel Fortune and her former assistant uh, in the PGH whose name skips me now. That's why... Uh, anyway, this the, the name skips me now. But um, it is well, something that is a problem right now to the country where we have to train our people again in forensic pathology and um, right now uh, when we present witnesses uh, as, as prosecutors we have to qualify the witnesses and uh, the only thing that's happening right now is that the courts are have become more lenient in allowing the other doctors of the services like the PNP and the MBI to come in as, uh, as uh, their jobs describe them to be as uh, part of the forensic team of the government but otherwise if, if the qualification for a forensic pathologist is to be is to be asked well we only have two qualified forensic pathologists in the country and this training is being conducted for the nbi and the pnp yes and the nbi and the pnp uh, madam chair so the alleged pow expert on forensic pathology is not part of it uh he was not invited into the first training that we conducted and uh we will, uh, we will see, Madam Chair, about this complaint. We will uh, look into it. Please wait Thank up. you. Yes, Mr. Chair, last question, please. Ako po, ay nangga, ako po ay naging kalihim ng kalusugan. And I have very much respect to our doctors, our scientists, lalo na yung mga pinauwi natin na ayaw-ayaw naman sanang umuwi kasi ang ganda ng kanilang profession abroad. Recently, I believe the Prosecutor General's Office has been fining I, I mean, I'm not sure if it's uh, the Prosecutor General's Office filing. These are cases from PAO. At paulit-ulit ko yung copy and paste cases um, related to Deng Vaksha na paulit-ulit na sinasabing may namatay pero sinasabi naman ng buong mundong walang namatay. And mind you, Mr. Secretary, in the whole world, more than 21 countries are continuously using the vaccine, increasing sa Pilipinas lang nagkaroon ng confusion. And mind you, the other agencies, let's say World Bank and UN agencies whose employees and families are coming to the Philippines are actually being mandated vaccination on dengue. My question is, anjajan yung kaso na di-dismiss, file ulit, file ng file, may hinihiring, naguguluhan kasi hindi makita ng DOJ before kung sino yung, uh, who, who's, um, who has the authority to handle this. Is it not, Mr. Chairman, Honorable Secretary, 
that this is already an injustice to our scientists and our experts. They are, they are being forced to shelf out millions for their bail. Eh, yung dalawa dun, mamamatay na nga kasi terminal na yung cancer ng isa. Yung isa, nagkakaroon ng thyroid stone. Why don't we allow them to die in peace? Okay. Madam Chair, um, can, you, can you ask the Prosecutor General to answer the, this question? Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. The matter as uh, of this time is that uh, the reason for the refilings is that the Supreme Court issued an order, uh, I would say so, uh, around two, three months ago, saying that the venue for the cases is now the Regional Trial Court in Quezon City. So meaning the previous cases before that were filed with the MTC, we have to refile it with the RTC. So that's what we have done, uh, Your Honor. Yeah, Mr. Chair, with uh, the indulgence, just last one quick because in rebuttal, and Mr. Chair, actually, Secretary... Okay, last question, please. Yes, the other expert is Dr. Cecilia Lim. So we only have two forensic pathologists in the Philippines. And yung tanong ko po, Kasi andya dyan na, nakikita na walang basihan at paulit-ulit na sinasabing walang namatay at hindi nakakamatay yung bakuna. Is it fair to say that if Paul keeps on filing cases, patuloy nyo lang din na ibibigay at patuloy nakakasuhan? For the record, Honorable Secretary, as I was computing earlier, each doctor, each RITM expert, at kasama na dito yung gumawa ng ating bakuna sa rabies, sa polio, sa measles, because these are the same scientists that were in both at kilala nyo naman yung iba doon. They are somehow forced to prepare 40 million for their bail. Saan naman sila hukuha noon? Okay. So, Madam Garin, if you take uh, some questions, take that on the second round. Yes, Your Honor. Please. Very gladly. Secretary. If I may, please. Yeah, Ms. Mr. Chair, I had an earlier question to the Prosecutor General. Is this justice or injustice for scientists or experts who went home to the Philippines, served the Philippines, served the government, and now they're being forced to come up with millions and pesos just to be on bail despite the fact na wala nang matumbok na kaso kasi wala nang kaso, wala nang namatay. The good prosecutor, please answer the question of the good representative card. Uh, with due respect, uh, Your Honor, I will answer by way of procedure because uh, the moment there is a complaint filed with the Department of Justice, we are mandated to receive it and run the uh, preliminary investigation. So it is procedural. And uh, in due course, whether we will file the case or not. In this particular case, the next procedure is for the prosecutors to file the case. So, ma'am, uh, Procedural po sa amin yan. Then after that, it goes to the court. Again, it's a matter of procedure po. Yes, okay. thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I'll go on my second round. And just to leave a last statement, I do admire the Department of Justice for coming out with an order that the prosecutor's office should stop filing weak cases. Yes. Because we have a lot of Mama. problems. We have a lot of Filipinos. And dami pong nangangailangan ng tulong nyo. Stop, please. Kung sino man yung mga nambababoy sa ating mga scientists at mga eksperto, sana po eh, makinsensya kayo. Thank you very much. Yun ang pinakapunto dito. Pinakapunto doon, mga kaibigan. No? Injustice, no? Yun ang pinakapunto doon. Kasi ito mga prosecutors, sa totoo lang, guys, sumusunod lang sila eh. Kung ano yung sinasabi ng boss nila, klarong-klaro naman na sumusunod lang sila. Di ba? Ito namang si Secretary, ang, ang technique naman niya, lalabas ka agad siya sa media. Mag-press con ka agad siya. Like for example, no, ito ha, magandang example to. Uh, yung, yung kaso po ni Bantag, mga kaibigan. Kaya po nalabasan ng probable cause yun eh. Kaya di ba, lumabas yung warrant of arrest ni Bantag? Dahil yung mga prosecutor, wala silang sariling desisyon. Kanino sila kumuha ng desisyon? Kay Bonjing. Kasi kung anong sinabi ni Bonjing sa Prescon, yun din yung guidelines nila. Yun yung sinusundan nila mga kaibigan kung anong sinabi ni Bonjing. Kasi nga, boss nila eh. Kaya po, ang nangyayari sa kaso ni Bantag mga kaibigan, ayun, kawawa. Lumabas yung probable cause and uh, eventually lumabas na rin yung warrant of arrest, ayun, nagtatago na si Bantag. Dahil nga, 
sa procedural or sa procedure na ginagamit ng Department of Justice na hindi naman talaga tama. Kung kahit nga tayo, hindi naman tayo mga abogado eh. Pero kung titignan yung mabuti guys, mali talaga, meron talagang mali eh. Hindi ko naman sinasabing ano no, uh, ano ba talaga ang mali dyan kasi masyadong technical dyan eh no. Sabihin nyo naman, hindi ka naman expert po din eh. O kaya nga, kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo eh. Hanggang doon lang kami sa, sa basic eh, na naintindihan namin. Kasi kahit kami, hindi kami mga expert, hindi tayo mga abogado, pero kung gagamitan mo lang ng common sense mga kaibigan, makikita mo yung mali eh. Yes! Prosecutor, mga puppet! Kung nakalaala nyo yung sa Bureau of Immigration, o oh, sino nakalaala doon sa Bureau of Immigration? Yung mga hapon, o oh, yung mga hapon na nakakulong, sa BI, anong ginawa doon sa BI? Pinagbaba, pinagbabayaran, pinag, pinag, uh, binabayaran ang mga prosecutor. Tanggap naman sila. O, di ba? Kasi nga, sila lang, sila, sila lang nag-uusap doon eh. Kontrolado nila lahat eh. Kontrolado ang prosecutor. Kontrolado ang judge. Eh, yung may hawak po ng Department of Justice... Ganun din. Kaya po, ang mga kaso guys, malamang sa malamang, kangaroo court talaga ang nangyayari. Palpak po ang mga kaso. Tinan mo sa anak niya, 3 months lang, labas na. Samantalang yung sa mga sabongero, hanggang ngayon, wala pa rin. O, ito, itong, itong, itong nililigramo ni Congresswoman Garin. O, Hustisya para sa mga doktor. Hustisya para sa mga scientist natin. Hindi sila nabibigyan ng tamang procedure sa batas. Bakit? Dahil ang Department of Justice Secretary, wala namang ginagawa eh. Kumukuha lang ng budget? Kaya nga, tinan mo, kaya siya naki-question ngayon. Ngayon, manghihingi kayo ng budget. Billion, billion. Oh. And then after ng budget, anong gagawin niyo? Oh, di ba? Ibubulsa niyo lang eh. <laughs> Ibubulsa niyo lang eh. <laughs> oh, di ba? So, pa tama no? Paano nga paano nga naman natin makukuha ang hustisya? Kung yung puno, yung puno, yung namumuno, wala din eh. Puro naman kapal pa puro naman sablay. Kahit ano mong gawin natin dito guys, no? kahit mag-ingay tayo ng mag-ingay, tama po itong si Lidor B. Hoy President, gising! Gising! Oh. Kasi hanggat wala po, hanggat tulog sila, natutulog sila sa pansitan, wala pong mangyayari sa atin. Weak kasi ang President natin, oh. sabi ni Susan Abilis, tama. Oh. Pag walang gumagawa po dito guys, walang nagsasalita, wala talaga. Hanggang dito na lang tayo. Katulad nung ito, katulad nung mga PDL, tatlong PDL na nakatakas. Asa na kaya yung mga tatlo na yun? Ang tanong, nakabalik na pa sa bilibid yun? Kasi wala pa tayong balita hanggang ngayon. Ang tanong, meron na kaya yung natrabaho yung tatlo na yun? Sana kaya sila ngayon? Sana kaya sila nagtatago? Baka nga nag operate na naman sila? Alisto lang sila sa budget. Oo, pag sa budget, ang bilis nila, mga kaibigan. Tapos, nahalata nyo, pag budget, lahat po sip-sip, no? <laughs> ang babait, no? Akala mo, parang mga, mga maamong tupa, eh. eh Siyempre, hindi ka mabigyan ng budget, nga nga ka. <laughs> ang sakit sa ulo, eh, no? Ang sakit sa bangs, no? <laughs> So yan po mga kaibigan, no? hanggang dyan lang po yung ano natin, topic natin kasi ito lang yung ano natin eh, hindi ko na, pinan hindi ko na ipapanood sa inyong iba kasi walang kwenta. <laughs> walang kwenta yung ibang discussion eh, puro lang papuri kay Bonjing eh. <laughs> Buti nga itong si Congresswoman Garin eh, medyo lumalaban kay Bonjing to eh. Medyo bumibira to kay Bonjing. May mga ibang mga ano, wala din eh.
Ewan ko ba bakit hindi nila kayang pwede naman nilang tanggalin, eh, no? Pwede naman nilang palitan. Oh. Pag talagang palpak ka na sa pwesto, sablay ka, bakit kailangan pang manatili, no? Pwede namang paalisin, pwede namang sipain. Takot kasi sila, no? Eh, Siyempre, utang na loob, eh. Parang ganun kasi yan. Utang na loob. May utang na loob. Ibang klase talaga. Only in the Philippines. Elite Warriors, mega love, shout out Sir Foodie, nakaabot rin. More power always. Ay, marami salamat, Elite Warriors. Jesse, BFF sila ni Marcos. <laughs> Oo, BFF kasi. Yun lang. Yun lang, BFF. Oo, no? Malakas ang kapit, no? Hinahanap nila si Bantag para sa kanila ang 1M. 2M pa nga yun, eh. Shout out Sir Pudinet, Liam's Ador, Nancy Aguto, listening from Ilocos Norte. Go, 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 Pudinet. Ayan, maraming salamat, Nancy Aguto. Mega love shout out, Elite Warriors. Nakakainis, Jens Yotero. Ewan ko ba? Hanggang dito na lang siguro talaga tayo. <laughs> Paano po tayo aasenso niyan kung ganyan yung mga opisyal? Napaka-importante pa naman yung Department of Justice. Oh, di ba? Alam nyo guys, ang Department of Justice, ang dami pong hawak na departamento yan, mga kaibigan. Kung hindi po ako nagkakamali, Magandang balita ang hatid namin sa inyo ngayong araw. Sa pagtatapos ng aming balitaan, nagbigay kami ng mga mahalagang impormasyon. Maraming salamat sa pagtutok at pagsuporta sa aming programa. Huwag kalimutang manatili sa mga susunod na araw para sa mga bagong balita at mga kwento na dapat nating abangan. Mula sa boses ng masa, magandang araw Pilipinas!